Here we go, the middle of November, the final three slash four weeks of high school football here in Kansas City. Dion Clisso Preps KC. He's got his coffee. That's a big coffee mug there. You need it though. It's gonna be a I do need it. Uh there's no doubt about that. I, I've been battling a, a cold now for uh kind of got on me on Sunday. Now it's a, it's a sore throat, which I hate. I hate sore throats worse than anything. That's the you They're can, the worst, aren't they? Yeah. You could do a lot to me. Uh but a sore throat really is, is what takes me down and and then it, you know, it wasn't too bad and you know, not too much coughing, nothing like that. Not it's not like chest cold or like that, it's just you know, kind of head drainage, the whole thing. And so now the only problem is that like I've slept the last two days during the day and now I can't sleep at night. Uh I've slept so much. Yeah. So last night was better, but still not great. I I I I have things going on today that I cannot take a nap or, or rest. So I will probably hit a wall and, and crash and have a good night's sleep yeah. tonight, which will hopefully springboard me my recovery even more. All right. Well, we're going to talk you through it here on Snap Tackle Pod. Yeah, well, uh, this is the beginning well, of the, the, the to pull the curtain back, this is the beginning of about five hours of talking because we do the radio show right yeah. after this. So this might be the best I sound all day. So we'll see it was, how it goes. It was almost <laughs> like you're out in the elements Friday night. I'm sure there's a lot of like coaches and players that are kind of feeling that way. Uh, Sam Kanopic when I were texting yesterday, and he's like, he said that's how he felt. Too. <laughs> he's like, I said, yeah, but I was in, I was indoors the entire time, so I have really no excuse. Um, just, just picked up whatever bug. You know, my wife's teaching in a new building, yeah. So she's already had, she's already had strep, uh, and kind of got something again. So I think I got kind of, I didn't get the strep, but I think I got whatever she brought home last week, and now I've kind of given it back to her. So yeah. we're, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those deals. So yeah, it is what it is. It's that this time of year. Could be it, it is. Could be it's November football. We had weather last Friday. Uh, some games moved uh, to Thursday, but most of them played on Friday night. Some delayed a little bit. And uh, I've really wreaked havoc on a lot of games. But there were a couple surprises, maybe, that had to do with the weather. I'm kind of thinking first of uh, Gardner Edgerton and Blue Valley uh, Northwest. Not that, that was a surprise that Gardner won. They're a good team. But I feel like that the elements really played into their favor. I think that I think that definitely was a, a good game for them to play element, element wise, and um, you know, and and I think it's interesting to see how different areas did it. And I think there was a worry of there was like a lightning swath, yeah, that was on the Missouri side about five thirty six o'clock. And to give you an idea, Grain Valley didn't start until eight ish. Fort Osage started on time, yeah. Um, and so you know, and, well, and Mill Valley start until eight. Was it eight thirty? No, eight o'clock. And but just south of there, the 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 games at Odak and at Gardner started on time at seven. Started on time. So I don't know if that the, the lightning thing I think kind of dissipated around the seven o'clock hour, but they'd already made decisions in places to bump back. I think Liberty bumped back to eight, or Liberty North bumped back to eight. So you know, all things being equal, if it was a full sixty game slate and I was the one allowed to schedule it, we'd start yeah. games at four with about four or five games, and then every fifteen to twenty minutes. Add another four or five until we got to about seven thirty eight o'clock. That makes the scoreboard much easier to run. Does it? Okay. It's a long. It spreads it out over a longer You're the amount high of time. School football commissioner. Of yes. Tennessee, which you kind yes. of are. You know. Which you know, if it, if it were TV wise, you'd want to do that. You want to stagger your start time so more people could watch. But uh, you know, you could go to a four o'clock game they, and they seven start at every game. twelve minutes or whatever. Yeah. So uh, that's that's what I would do. But no, it uh, it wasn't. I mean. It, it was a wet, I mean, you were out in it. It was a wet night. It rained like crazy in spots. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was coming down and, uh, but the, the lightning, I think dissipated right around seven o'clock or so. The worst was in Nixa where Ray Peck was. They didn't yeah. start until almost nine forty. Wow. And I guess Definitely Nixa called it like, Saturday. well, Before Nixa called it like for Ray yeah, Peck to go the, back. The, like the web city Sorry. games, the, some other games that were down there. Bump to Saturday, but if you're Lee Summit or you're you're Ray Peck, even though you're on the southern part of Kansas City, you're still two and a half hours out at the yeah. at the best. I guess Nick's had called at like ten o'clock in the morning and said, "Hey, you want to move it up?" And Ray Peck was like, "We can't just make buses pop out of thin air. Yeah, yeah, you can't make it happen like that." It's like I think they were treating them like they were across town. Like, "Hey, let's move it up. You guys get over here a little early and we'll go." It's like, no, we're in freaking Kansas City. We can't just. Yeah. Go so they didn't get done till close to midnight, <laughs> and Ray Peck got. I think that kind of hurt Ray Peck in the sense of just they, you know, that their offense is really high powered, and they only scored 15 points. I only gave up 27 um, mm-hmm. to Nixa, so I think that says 
for your Knicks, I'd be really worried about at least on the North. Uh, you were yeah. you were number one seed in name only. I think you're going to find out this week. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, any surprises from last week? Any any games that uh, j- jumped out at you? Some some results. Well, one is uh, one that probably a lot of people hadn't even paid attention to, and still having if they're not paying attention, have knows Pembroke Hill beat St. Michael and shut them out. Okay. They had been shut out by them 35 nothing earlier in the season. They beat them 26 wow. to nothing. And you know, Coach Kanopic and I were exchanging some texts, and he's the Chiefs coach of the week this week. And that was a one and four team, and now they're five and six. Uh, they've come a long way in a short amount of time, and um, they're playing Holden in a district championship. I'd make Holden the favorite there. But Pembroke Hill, you know, they, he said, he goes, we had a great defensive game plan. Our kids played great in the elements, no drop, no drop snaps, no fumbles. He, you know, and, and, and it was one of those things that, you know, I, I think that's the Pembroke Hill could win a district title. And I, they're a couple games into the season. I was wondering if they're going to win a game mm. and they're one went away from a district title. So, I, you know, hats off to them. Other than that, it was pretty good. It was pretty well chalk. I mean, uh, I, I like Park Hill South going into that Park Hill game. Um, yeah, you did. I thought they you were, picked them. I, I thought they were playing better. Um, I like Ray Peck. They didn't get the win. Uh, I think Olathe Northwest was a bit of a stunner, but As you Olathe say, on South had been Olathe Northwest beating Olathe the South, flipping a result from the regular yeah, season. Yeah, I, you know, and and someone had uh, watched last week and said that had given us. I think they gave us kudos to that. We said that Olathe Northwest had beaten the teams that they should beat, and that's the first step to becoming a, a pretty good program. I think they were giving us a positive there. I, it was tough to yeah. tell on Twitter what what they were saying, but. That's what only the Northwest had done. And then they go and beat Olathe South, which is a team that's probably equal to them or had played a little better, you know, had beat them yeah. the first time around. So, I mean, it's, you stepped up and you reverse the thing there. But uh, that's, a, you know, Olathe West and Olathe Northwest in a spot. Olathe Northwest had never made this this deep in the playoffs before. Right. In almost 20 years. So this is a, a bit, they've won seven games, which if I, if my math is correct, I don't think they've ever won seven games in a season before. I said, I don't think Olathe West has been that far in 6A. In 6A. They? they made the semis in 5A that one yeah. year. Um, and so, yes, this is one of those two teams is going to be in the semis. Um, and, and they are both playing, they are both playing great football, mm. great football. Um, yeah. And I, I'm excited about that game on Friday night. I think it's going to be one of the better games out there. And, and it's cool to see, you know, we went into 6A this year going, well, we don't know. And Some if I had told you, there. I like it. Some new I, blood. I, if I'd have told you Blue Valley, I think the only team that a lot of us would have agreed upon would Blue be there, West. which is Blue Valley West, which going in two weeks ago, I don't know if we would have picked them. Right. Early in the season, they weren't playing their best football. Now they're playing how we thought they'd play. Yeah. And Gardner, I mean, I think Gardner, as the season went on, you could see him in that spot. And I think Olathe West as well, but Olathe Northwest has stepped in. I mean, there's no Olathe North. There's no Blue Valley Northwest. There's no Blue Valley North. There's no Blue Valley. I mean, you know, I mean, those are the teams that have been in this, these, you know, these quarterfinals pretty consistently over the last five to seven years. And so it's no Shawnee Mission Northwest that's been in and out of there um, a little bit. So, yeah, it's definitely 6A has done exactly what we thought it would do at the beginning of the season. So it's great to see great, uh, you know, to see a team like, you know, Blue Valley West has never been to a 6A title game. Uh, Gardner's never been to a 6A title game. All four of those teams, whoever goes, will be there in a 6A title game. For the yeah, so Gardner, they were in the 5A title, right, when they yeah. played Hutch? With yeah, Bubba. it was a 5A game. Yep, with Bubba. Yep. So. Uh, how about 4A in Kansas? I mean, Eudora uh, coming oh so close to knocking off one of the big uh, private schools. Yeah, I think that says a lot about the Frontier League and where they're at. And um, They played fantastic, and, and then they get now. Um, Miege gets Piper, who went down and beat Chanute in double overtime. And I, <laughs> that was what a, a way, what game. a game, by the way, did you hear? Oh, how, crazy. You know, game. I, I mean, I, I, I watched it online and they I, went for two Piper went for two after they scored, didn't get it. Mm-hmm. But then, uh, Chanute missed the PAT. He got it blocked. Yeah. Yeah. He missed the PAT on theirs. And then in double overtime, they went for two and got it. And I, I tell you, it's, it's, that was a crazy game to watch. Uh, and I encouraged people on Twitter that night that they needed to tune in and listen to the guys doing that game because they were so bad. They were good. And it was really, it was entertaining. I put on my tweet. What do you like, mean they were so I, bad? Oh God, they were awful. The one guy doing play by play goes, well, they played for 32 minutes and like that. And the guy goes, no, they played for 48. <laughs> uh, and then they didn't know the overtime rules. They're like, this is like college, right? From the 25. And then I think there's a former coach who's like, no, it's the 10. It's the 10. And it's just, that, yeah, they did. And there was a, there was a delay because the, the, they lost a bank of lights for a while. 
Um, oh, so it was nice. like a 20 some minute delay and they were talking during that. So, you know, it would, they were just comically bad. Um, and, and it was, it was, it was <laughs> Cole Young and I were like, I was like, you got to check these guys out, man. This, <laughs> this is brutal, <laughs> but ha- Hey, have fun with it. So, you know, settle in, call your game. <laughs> yeah. You're not, not everybody's going to get, uh, you know, uh, you know, Mike Tariq, now Michael yeah, it's not, from the broadcasts. It's not Wyke and Bo Richter every night. <laughs> no, you, know can't, you, can't, <laughs> uh, you can't top Bo Richter. All right, let's uh, look ahead here to the um, basically the quarterfinals in Kansas and in big class in uh, Missouri, and then basically the Sweet 16 in classes five on down in Missouri with your big three games of the week. Let's start on the Missouri side. Smithville at Kearney. Man, this is what uh, defending state champ taking on probably the favorites this year in class four and Cardi. Well, yeah, one of them. And one of them, I, I think this is a game that both these teams knew when, when that game was a, a missed field goal, the long field goal. I don't know. I mean, he would have had to, you know, crush that thing, Butker style. But um, no, it uh, it was a close game the first time around. They've All they've each, each of them have done is just handle their business all the way through. I mean, Carney got down to Belton the last week of the season and then just ran past them with like 28 straight points. You know, so maybe not a little focus for a quarter and a half for Carney, but Carney's done everything you can ask of a team. They've, they've rolled and Smithville has too. So at Smithville, you know, in the, in the weather last week, Van Horn kind of hung around for a quarter and a half and then Smithville just kind of ran away from 32 to nothing, but it was like eight, nothing, 16, nothing there for a while. So that's a great game. I, I think, you know, the winner of that game should host um, the winner of center and uh, Nevada. Um, yeah. So that's a, like either way, if you know, Carney, if it's Carney and center, Carney would host. If it's Smithville, Smithville will host because they'll be on the road. Um, if it's Smithville and Nevada, the only one we'd have to go on the road would be Carney if they won and Nevada won down there. So um, they're trying to host that game should be a good one in class. Four. I didn't realize how close it was. I'd forgotten 20 yeah. to 19, Carney won last time. Of course, that's Smithville's only loss of the season. I'm doing the math here, and it's going to be quick math. Since uh, since it's typical Smithville team, since Smithville allowed 20 points to Kearney, they've given up a total of like 29 the rest of the season. Yeah, they've had they've had three, some shutouts four, five, in there too. It's like nine games. Yeah, yeah, their defense is is not doesn't have the you know the star power it did last year with Cody Simonsic and some of those guys, but they've they've got a good group that really runs the ball and tackles well and just plays Smithville football. Yeah, that is Smithville football right there. Also on the Missouri side, you have Park Hill South. At Liberty North, uh, does Park you know, Hill South have uh, more magic in it to take over, uh, to to take on and beat what has been the best team in the city all year long? You know, last year, this is a rematch of last year's district championship game where Park Hill South had the one seed because they were undefeated. Liberty North had that loss to Bentonville first week of the season, so mm-hmm. they were at Park Hill South. Um, the, the schedule's a little more apples to apples this year than it was last year. Park Hill South is playing fantastic. Briggs Barchosh, DJ Jones, the you know are, are just a one-two punch. Uh, Gilroy is an outstanding linebacker for them. They've got good receivers. Uh, they know who they are. They, they've got a great identity. Liberty North's defense is unbelievable. Uh, the last week, uh, Blue Spring South goes down and scores. It's six nothing, and next thing you know, it's twenty-three to seven or twenty-three to six, and with a safety from one Melvin Laster uh, yeah. in there as well. So. Um, that was one thing I was talking to Rob Evans, who was on the call for Blue Spring South, and he said there was one play where they just they schemed last year untouched into the backfield. He's like, you can't, <laughs> you can't. Yeah, <laughs> that's one guy you can't just let run wild. But no, that defense is outstanding, and I, I you got to go Liberty North on this one. But but Park Hill South is dangerous. Um, when you got a playmaker like Briggs Bartosh, and, and he's got guys around him who can really do some things, it's going to test it. But we know. The strength of Liberty North is that defense. Mm. So I think it's a fun game, but uh, yeah, it's it's definitely going to be a good one. That's funny. We're seeing these 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 teams, um, you know, that are year in year out good, like Liberty North, like Smithville and Mill Valley. It's they all. I mean, they hang their hats on defense. I mean, that yeah. is it. That is, that is how you win at the high school level. And um, I mean, just another year, another example of that. And seem, especially in November, seems those those defenses get better and better. The harder it is to score, especially on on Friday night when it's an, a monsoon, it's a uh, it's almost unfair when you get defenses like that out there. Well, and this week's gonna be cold, so that ball's gonna be hard. <laughs> really cold uh, in the 30s on Friday night. 
Uh, last but not least, uh, Odessa at Pembroke Hill. Uh, Pleasant correct. Hill. What's that? Pleasant Hill. Oh, Pleasant, Pleasant Hill, Hill. sorry. Uh, yeah. no, my hill's wrong. Odessa yeah, you get Pleasant Hill. Hill in Class 3. Yeah, you know, I, Odessa's playing fantastic. They rolled University Academy last Saturday. Pleasant Hill's just handling their business. Uh, you know, the only, thing, the only team that's even really come close to them is Center, who beat them. Yeah. Um, I would expect Pleasant Hill to get the win here and then probably take on Maryville in the next round. We'll see. Uh, Savannah's a really good football team, and Maryville's got to try and beat them for a second straight time. And uh, and same with Pleasant Hill trying to beat Odessa. Um, you know, Odessa is not the team they've been uh, when they were, you know, three, four years without losing a regular season game. Yep. Uh, COVID year probably would have won another state championship. I think they were um, playing as well as anybody. Uh, but Pleasant Hill's kind of usurped them right now. But I expect Mark Thomas to come out with a really good game plan and do everything they can uh, to slow down that Pleasant Hill team. Yeah, 49-7, to seven, first time around back in September. <laughs> uh, Long time Pleasant ago, Hill yeah. Got the win over uh, over Odessa. We shall see. That's your big three on the Missouri side. Over on the Kansas side, you've got uh, Piper and Miege. Uh, and look, this should be a really good Piper. Piper's scrappy, man. We talked about that that game they won last week over the one-seed Chanute. And mm-hmm. uh, we talked last week too, and it kind of kind of came true this past week with Eudora coming close to me. Asia, all those four A schools, especially up here in the Frontier League, aren't aren't as intimidated uh, by, yeah. by me Asia and Aquinas and, and St. James maybe as they used to be. Well, I think you know they've got a lot of good athletes on that Piper team, and they're well coached. John Black has done a great job with that team this year uh, in his first year up at his alma mater, and uh, it, it's going to be a tough road. I mean, me Asia's. Is tough, but I think there's a lot of film that they can get, you know, look at from that Eudora game. And Eudora had athletes, and they scored with them. Um, they just got behind, you know, one stagger behind and couldn't keep, you know, there wasn't enough time for them to catch up. And uh, no, it's uh, it, it's going to be an interesting, interesting battle. I, you know, we've got St. James and, and uh, Aquinas on the other side, so it should be, you, you know, there's pretty a pretty good chance you're still going to have two Catholic schools in the semifinals. But they, you know, Piper's playing with house money. I mean, they're, you know, they went down to Chanute in a hostile environment, got that win, played great. We're down two scores, came back and got that tie. <coughs> Let me get a little coffee here. <laughs> no worries. I'll lead you to your next uh, big three games of the week. And uh, they're both from Kansas Class 6A, yeah. Blue Valley West and Gardner Edgerton, Olathe West and Olathe Northwest. Uh, similar to last week in the, the four games. <laughs> In 6A on the east side. I, I went back and forth on pretty much all of them. I'm going back and forth on these two. Yeah, I'm the same way. Um, I like the way Blue Valley West is playing defense and run the ball right now. They're really physical. And that's going to help, you know, the, the, they're going to, they will have seen a flex bone team in Aquinas. So that's not yeah. a, a mystery to them. They saw them in the well. first day. They, they, they lost uh, convincingly 31 to 7 to Aquinas. That was week one of the year. We, we've already established Blue uh-huh. Valley West is. Playing a different brand of football now. Yeah, they flipped the switch when they got in the playoffs. Uh, and and you know, you talk about uh, Zach Darsh, their their linebacker slash quarterback. I mean, he he does great things for them. Sage, uh, Sage, uh, oh, I'm losing his last name. Their tailback is really good. Huffman uh, and they're, Huffman, Sage Huffman. And I was going to call him Sage Rosenfels, but he's not the quarterback from Iowa State from the uh, early '90s, I think. Um, yeah. But uh, uh, no, uh, Sage would have been early 2000s, I think. Early 2000s. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm making that old. Um, I'm that old. He's not. Um, no, I, I think that they are playing tough and physical and Gardner's playing tough and physical. That one's going to be a knockdown drag out fight. Late nineties. We were both we were, late nineties we kind of in between. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then you look at Olathe West and, and Olathe Northwest and they're similar. They're physical. You know, Olathe West is going to give up some points. Olathe Northwest is playing fantastic. I mean, they, they are defensively held down that Olathe South team. They've been playing really well. So, I, I love that the, both those games. That's why they're both big three games. And then, of course, next week, there's only three games on the Kansas side. So we know what those three games will be, the semifinals all the way around. Yeah. Don't call them sub-state or else I'll, I'll I won't. end this. I'm, I'm good with that. Let's call them I, I like I like, I like like NCAA tournament terms. Final four, Elite mm-hmm. eight, Sweet 16. Uh, just call it that. And I'm taking a look here. I don't think – yeah, so it was a close game the first time around. Olate the West beat Olate the Northwest. I believe they had to come from behind – you get that, yeah. but it was a 31-28 game, and that's a that could be a coin flip over in uh, 6A. <laughs> Let's take a look here. <laughs> Let's take a look here. 
because we're battling through, just like these teams are battling through the oh, other yeah. Let's take a look. At, There's, nobody feels down. sorry for me. Nobody feels sorry for me. I know that. Pre- predict these semifinals slash quarterfinals for next week. Do you think it's going to be Liberty North and CBC in Missouri Class 6? I think so. Um, is it the I same CBC level of team? I've heard their defense team? is not what it was. I've, I've heard this is a gettable CBC team. Um, and, you know, Liberty North last year in the state championship game came out, got a turnover. You know, if they go and punch that in for a touchdown, I think it changes the entire um, tenor of that game. Um, but, you know, this year I think they're closer. I think their defense is better. I think they're they're more athletic. You know, there, there are a lot of juniors and sophomores last year on that Liberty North team. But, you know, yeah. who'd never been there before, never done that, never, you know, never played to CBC. You know, they went down to Bentonville. That was a nice win. They played, you know, Rockhurst. They've done some things like that. But, you know, it's, you know, it was a, a big time stage for them to get there for the first time. I think they, they've got that mentality. Now, I, I, if they get past Park Hill South, I think they've got a good shot against the state championship game. And I think if yeah. Lee Summer North gets past Nixon, which they should, uh, they'll, the, the Smiths up there. Uh, but I think, I think Lee Summer North has got a keg walk into the state championship. Game. So you think Lee Summer North will play DeSmet? You think DeSmet will beat Rock, Rockbridge? Yes. Rockbridge has played no one. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. They, they lost one game. Copy that. Week one. Or they, I think they lost late. Francis Howell beat them late. But week one, they lost a Park Hill South team who didn't know who they were. Bartosh was not playing quarterback. Uh, and they beat them easily. Park Hill yeah. South did. And, you know, midway through the season, people were like, oh, well, they're, they're, they should be ranked. And I'm like, no, no, they have not beaten anyone. And if they were in Kansas City, they'd be over. You know, and that's, before, you know, because they, they played a Park Hill South team that you, if you wouldn't talk to Coach Palmer right now, and said, were you any good in week one? He'd probably tell you no. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, it's it goes back to when Blue Springs, I think it was 13, beat Rockbridge in the state championship game, and we're up like 28 to 3 at halftime or something, and just shut it down at that point. Ray Peck played them earlier in the year at Rockbridge, and Ray Peck beat them by like two touchdowns. And they're walking off the field, and the AD at, Ray, at, at Rockbridge walks up to Tom Cruz says, man, We'll probably see you guys in the state championship game. And he goes, I looked at him like, are you crazy? I'm like the fifth best team in my own town. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, have you paid attention to what's going on? <laughs> and that's the kind of year we have in Kansas city right now. We've got, we've got five, six teams. We got a lot of teams who are not playing who are good enough to go through yeah. that district and compete in other districts too. So it, it's, you know, it's a really good year. Nice. Um, good year in class five too. We have Grain Valley playing Raytown. Florida yes. State's playing Oak Park. Who gets out of those games? I like Grain Valley. Um, they're playing fantastic. I like Fort Osage, but Oak Park is that was a five point game first time around. That was a back yeah. and forth game. Um, so that's good. That's closer to a coin toss there. Uh, but Fort Osage and Grain Valley have been playing the best along with Oak Park. Those three teams and really Raytown the last month of the season, those four teams are there for a reason. I just feel like we're we're barreling towards a Grain Valley Fort Osage week one rematch where I would assume it'll be a much better looking game than the one I watched on Spectrum in week one, because that was horrible. Nice. Both football on the ground a ton. It was not, it, it was like, that's, I think that's where I thought to myself, Oh my gosh, I thought these teams were gonna be really good. They don't look very good. And so <laughs> it took us a while to kind of get, you know, that neither one of those teams started off great. And so, it, you know, they now look like the teams that I think you know, the, these are the four teams. I think Oak Park was a bit of a surprise. Uh, but after about week six, I think that that surprise was gone. Um, and then they've proven, that they're yeah. they're a really good football team. Um, and right, young. Yeah, class four. Oak Park is young. <laughs> oh, you're young. It's been one of the best stories of the year. King Clemens this year in Kansas City high school football. In class four, Center in Nevada, Carney, and Smithville. I know you like Center, correct? Who wins that Carney Smithville game? I'm gonna have to make that pick later today, so I probably need to get. I I. Second time around, I like Smithville, I think. But Carney has answered every question that has been put in front of him. And it's at Carney. I mean, I, I know I know we're two coaches out from the Greg Jones era, but you didn't go into Carney and win playoff games. It just doesn't happen. I mean, they are so good at home, and I think that that is going on right now. So I don't know. I, I'm going to give a slight lean to Smithville, but Carney definitely – is a team that has done everything that has been asked of them yeah. and deserve to be where they're at. Yeah, absolutely. And is, is, is St. Mary still the team to beat in that class? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, I think that that center probably has the speed to match up with them. 
Uh, I also did get an email stating that uh, Smithville and Carney have plenty of speed and that Carney won the Class 4 state championship. And I said, okay, we'll see, because we talked about the team speed that center has. Right. Uh, that's the one thing I think that people, you know, yeah, they've got the offensive firepower, can hang 50 on anybody. I think the thing that center has that people don't really understand is the speed on their defense. They close down, they close down on you with angles that you don't, that you thought you had that they don't. So we'll see. They got, you know, there's, there's a good chance center's going to play one of those teams next week. So we'll see, but I like center over Nevada. Cause I think they're, they'll just, I think they've got too much offense and, and their team speed is too good. You think Pleasant Hill does it again over Odessa? I think so. Um, like I said, I like a Pleasant Hill Maryville matchup that next round. The Savannah is a good team, but I, I just think Maryville's playing really good football. And I think their schedule that they played, you know, Lutheran North and Blair Oaks and teams like that, that have really gotten them in position to where, you know, there's teams that, they, that they've played already this year that they look across the sideline and you go, we've already beaten teams better than you. Yeah. So that, and they've got that kind of DNA in them. So I like, I think a Maryville Pleasant Hill is definitely uh, going to be the game to watch there. Class two, we've got, uh, I believe, Pembroke Hill and Richmond. Anybody else kind of in the area? No, Pembroke, Pembroke Hill, Holden, Richmond, Lafayette. Hill. I'm sorry. As far as area teams go, Richmond and Pembroke Hill, and I guess Lafayette County too. Yeah, I, you know, I that was a that was a close game, 18 to 10, the first time around Lafayette County and Richmond. I feel like Lafayette County is going to play a little better. Now, not being said, Richmond has done everything they need to do. The Holden Pembroke Hill game is great. Coach Dean, talk about two coaches who've done a fantastic job with their team. Coach Deaner took that team that was over two years ago, and has built them in the spot where they're at now, where the only games that they've lost is to Mid Buchanan, who's a state ranked team, Lafayette County, and Richmond. Those are the only three games, and they lost close to Richmond and, and Mid Buchanan. So, um, and then you look at Pembroke Hill, you see what they've done um, late in the season, and they've played some pretty good teams down the stretch. So, I, I think I'm going to give the lean to the to the top seeds in, the, in both those districts. <clears throat> Of Holden and Lafayette County. East Buck and Mid Buck in Class One, a rematch. Does East Buck get it done again? I think so. I, it, that was a close game. It was 14 to 12 at halftime. They scored 34 points yeah. in the third quarter. Uh, I, I think East Buck, their their depth really shows up this time of year. Uh, you know, they've, they've got 60 some kids and they really can just pull away from you in games. And I think that's really going to help them down the line. And then the other one's Adrian and Butler. Adrian, uh, had a little rough spot there at the end of the year. They lost to Tipton. Um, I, I think if they're healthy, they've got to shut the knock off the one seed there at Butler. Yeah. Over in Kansas, six A. Who's who's going to be in the in the semifinals? Sub state to the lay person. I don't know, be semifinals, I guess, to the lay person. Uh, final four basically out of Blue Valley West and Gardner, Olathe West and Olathe Northwest. Who who do you see playing November eighteenth? I'd say West West. Which means it's probably be Gardner Northwest. <laughs> right there. there you go. It's funny on the uh, on the west side in Kansas, it's kind of wild west too. There's there's so much there's so many good teams. There's no like great team that's usually Derby out ahead of the back. Derby's part of it, but they're not they're not Derby. Derby Manhattan they usually are. You got Manhattan, Wichita Northwest, Derby, Washburn Rural. Those are those are two pick 'em games too almost. Yeah, I think a lot of people were just expecting Wichita Northwest to kind of step up, but they got beat by Manhattan earlier. Uh, and Derby. So, you know, they yeah. had kind of taken that big step and, but you're right. I, you know, I, I, until I see a Manhattan in a state championship game, that's what I'll believe it. I still think it's probably Derby or Wichita Northwest. Washburn rules a good team too. And they played a lot of teams um, from the Metro this year uh, and, yeah. and got some good wins, you know, uh, DeSoto and, and Piper beat the, both of them. Beat yeah. The handle and, Piper. And that's DeSoto's <laughs> only loss. And it was yeah. a close game. And that, that transitions us transitions us here to uh, Class 5A in Kansas. DeSoto still alive, playing great football, really good defense, taking on Blue Valley Southwest, which should be a great game, all green there. And then Mill Valley and Pittsburgh, who gets out of those two games to play in the semis? I, I think Mill Valley will squeak by. Think so? <laughs> Just a little bit. Uh, no, they're going to roll. Um, DeSoto and Southwest is a toss-up game. Uh, Dylan Dunn, the quarterback from Southwest, is playing great. Um, and, you know, I think in Southwest's mind, and, and nothing against DeSoto, they look across the field and they're like, you know, what would DeSoto do in our league? Yeah. You know, I mean, who would they, who would they be? You know, I think there's a couple games in there, but um, – and also they've seen a flex bone team in St. Thomas Quest. So they, 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 they play Aquinas this year. Do they, have they seen the flex bone? Yes, they have. So, you know – um, they didn't play St. James this year. That's the one they didn't play. They didn't play St. James. But, uh, no, they played Aquinas, so they've seen a flexible. I think 
I don't know. I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to make a pick on that one yet because I still have to make one later on my own show. So I will. I'll, I'll make one. I'll, I'll the uh, USD two three two showdown. I think it's going to be <laughs> Mill Valley and Desoto, and what would be the biggest game in you know that school district's history in the in the semifinals. Similar in five A, you got you got Mays and Hutch and Hayes still alive on, on the on the west side. Mays has just rolled through teams obviously this year. They beat Derby in a close game. Um, but a, a lot of parity or a lot of good teams, I should say, yeah. uh, out West as well. I don't think they play that much defense out there. They don't. Yeah. I think, I think uh, that that's what, that's what would help a DeSoto deal. or a, a, a Mill Valley or even a Blue Valley Southwest. They no, play a little more defense on this side. So that yeah. that's going to help them stay championship time. All right. Who's in the uh, semifinals for 4A? Is it, uh, is it going to be uh, I think uh, private Miege? school, private school? And so which ones? And St. James. Miege St. James? Yes. Well, you're going to do a third straight year of that in the semifinals. Oh, yeah, I guess it would be. So in, I, in I like defensively what St. James does in their front seven. And they've they they were able to to beat the quiet. Not that it's going to be easy. And it don't, and it's you know, if you're St. James, don't let them get up two touchdowns on you. Right. Because then you're playing from behind, and then you know, Sean Carroll will be running down your throat. So it's, it, that's what it is there. But I, I think St. James is going to get it just because I like their front seven on defense, but man, that's going to be a knockdown drag out fight. I don't believe we have any teams left in uh, Kansas three, a, which is no fine. Bishop Ward. Bishop Ward got crushed by Holton. <laughs> yeah. Great season Wellsville, for them. Though. Wellsville lost Wellsville got in a close Hayden. game. Um, and that's fine because Andale is just going to lay waste to any opponent they see. Yes. They're unbelievable. There, I mean, do they have the second longest winning streak in the nation now? Somebody said. I know it's the longest in Kansas by far. I mean, they're. In I think it's uh, somebody. Somebody who was one lost. Who had the longest streak in the nation? I think got beat last week, and I was seeing something on Twitter that maybe Andale was now number two in the nation. Yeah, so, I don't see it ending soon either. <laughs> no, they're pretty dominant, and and when they got rid of the dumb four A one, four A two, and went to six classes. Yeah, Andale just slid right in there. Yeah, they did dominate. They're going to dominate that class for a long time. So, yeah, it's three A's definitely that. Any, uh, any, before we get out of here, any Simone Award candidates, um, you know, up their, you know, their their game, you know, campaign harder last week, make a, make more of a case or any guy, anybody jump into the Simone candidate pool from, uh, from, I'm going to say, I'm going to say Mason McGravin from Olathe West is starting to, Etch his name. He is it. He is a guy, and that is a team that it's similar to Blue Valley West. So many expectations at the beginning. They didn't play as well at the beginning of the season. Weeks and then the back half of the season, (laughs) they've been great, and he's been great. I I like him jumping in there. You know, we got some guys who are already in the clubhouse and Oatis and Kendrick Bell. Um, I think Briggs Bartosh went in the head to head with Bell. That puts him in the conversation. I, I think he's solidly in the top 10. Um, I think Van Dyne is solidly in the top 10. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it's, it, it's kind of interesting. You've got some other, you know, I don't say fringe guys, but there's some guys people don't talk about. There's an Eddie McLaughlin, who's a, you know, a dual threat guy at Leavenworth, put up huge numbers for them. Um, Dylan Dunn has put up big numbers mm-hmm. for Southwest the last few weeks. So those, those two guys in five, and then, you know, that's who's kind of left in the, in six a is the same way we talked about McGavern. Um, you know, and at least some of North has about five guys who touch the ball, so they don't really have. I'd say Caden Green off their team, the offensive line. Only man, so I might be uh, might be voting for one of those uh, uh the Bell candidates uh, for Simone or one of those uh, defensive yeah. guys, one of those linemen. I think, and then you know, like an Idris Kill from North Kansas City. Um, there's that could be on the ballot in the top ten. Buchanan so candidates, sorry, not Bell. Yeah, Buchanan candidates. Uh, so it's, I, I think that's probably a, a list right now. Uh, to look at, uh, you know, that that are probably the, the 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 guys in there, but you know, Van Dyne keeps going, throwing a couple touchdowns a week and no interceptions. Mm-hmm. That starts to jump off the page at you, and if they, you know, they get some big wins, you know, we saw Conrad Holly a few years ago uh, get it, you know, best player, best team kind of thing. Yeah, uh, you know, if they were to go deep, that he would definitely have that. But you know, Zach, a guy like Zach Darsh is interesting for Blue Valley West because he's he was on the ballot as a linebacker last year for the Buchanan, mm-hmm. and I and he will be on the ballot for the Buchanan too. Yeah, but he's also playing quarterback. Yeah, 
So, I mean, you know, I, I need to get a snap count on him. And this week is a good week to see how much, you know, you know, because they, they split some time with Nagy the, to spell Darsh at yeah. QB. But, if, you know, if he's getting every snap at quarterback and playing a lot of snaps, you know, majority of snaps on defense, you, you don't get – we haven't had a two-way guy like that. No. Probably since Although Connor I would Harrison say Jed Deneen should have been close last year. I mean, yeah, Jed Deneen. He was the Kansas, I mean, 6 a defensive player of the year. And yeah. it was also the Simone candidate for his play at uh, – at, uh, And Stubblefield. We left out Stubblefield that they got beat. Yeah. So, I mean, Stubblefield's in that mix as well. So, you know, those are kind of the ones there. And, and like I said, Darsh is one to keep an eye on. Um, I think he's definitely in the Buchanan conversation. Um, and, you know, he's one of the leading tacklers, I think, in the state of Kansas. He was last year. I think he is this year too. So, yeah, it's it, it it'll be interesting. That'll we'll you'll start to see some of that stuff come out. Um, probably next week we'll have, and then we'll be media meeting will happen. We got to get that scheduled yeah. <laughs> to get that going. But then the voting will take place over Thanksgiving weekend. Sounds good. Like you mentioned, should be a cold one on uh, Friday. Uh, yes, Bundle I will not up. be going out to a game Friday night with the way get the gloves on, where you can the ones that where you can still get on your phone, okay? Because yes. at, at halftime or whenever during your game, if you're outside. Check out prepskc.com. Um, as there's, it's it's it it's, takes less time now these next few weeks because there's there's fewer games. We got only yes. a handful of teams left, and it'll be half those teams left uh, going into the week uh, week after next. So yeah, it's uh we we will be down to I think I think ten games next week, assuming Lee Summit North wins next week and, next Friday. Yes, next Friday. Yeah. It's 10, maybe 11, um, yeah. because if, if Adrian wins down there, because there's, you know, so it's going to be, it's going to be a fun week and setting up the quarter, like class one through five quarterfinals on the Missouri side are going to be pretty, pretty nasty. Yeah. This and this week should make really up for maybe games. a lack of great games the previous two weeks. This is the start of a two week stretch where you yeah. have your best football in Kansas City. Yeah. You know, I mean, Piper Chanute was great. <laughs> <laughs> That was the game, more of, those games, of the week. Please. Yes, I'd love for that. I'd hopefully have some of that this weekend, next week. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, awesome. For Dion, I'm Mick. We'll see you next time right here on Snap Tag Pod.